One of the consequences and difficulties of sharing the things that you are passionate about publicly is the comment section. If you're passionate in it, there is someone out there who is passionate the other way and oftentimes will take personal shots at you. And we're told we should just ignore the haters. The problem is telling someone to ignore the haters is kind of like telling someone who's really nervous to just relax. No one in the history of the world has ever relaxed by being told to relax, and no one has ever felt better about criticism by being told to simply ignore it. Today we're going to talk about what is the healthy way and the best way to respond to that criticism so you keep sharing what you love and you aren't consumed by the judgment. Hi, my name is Gene Montrestelli, and I spend most of my professional life helping people to pursue their passions and create authentic lives. And the part of that that is really, really scary is oftentimes when we're pursuing our passions, we're putting ourselves out there in the world, which opens us up to all sorts of criticism. Recently, I started doing a lot more stuff on social media and posting a lot more videos on YouTube to help people to do exactly that, which has put me in a circumstance where I've received a bunch of very interesting pieces of feedback. Some of the feedback is very positive, some of it is encouraging, while other pieces of feedback are questioning my sanity, calling the work that I do a scam, and one person very constructively instructed me that I should stop making videos and I should just go get a girlfriend. Now, I appreciate people being concerned about my life, but I also want to share the stuff that I'm really, really passionate about. When I first started posting things on YouTube, one of my friends said, well, Beyonce never reads the comments and you shouldn't read the comments either. And it is probably a good and healthy thing for us not to read the comment section of the stuff that we're posting. But at the exact same time, even if we're in a situation where we're not putting something on social media where there's a comment section, more than likely when you start to pursue your passions, you're going to bump into people in your life who don't have the same passion, who've put you in a little box and expect you to act in a very particular way. Now, on some level, there's a part of us that thinks, you know, I should just be able to brush this aside. I shouldn't engage with this in any way. I just need to ignore the haters. And if you're able to do that, that's great. But the problem is the way our subconscious mind works. Now, 7,000 years ago, when we were wandering the planet in these tiny little tribes, the way that we stayed safe was by staying connected to other people. And if we did something that offended the tribe and pushed us on the outside, we would die. And that's not hyperbole. That's really what would happen to us. Thousands and thousands of years ago, when we were much less organized and much less civilized, the world was a much scarier place. And so that means we are walking around with the genetic heritage, the story that says, if I am pushed outside of the tribe, I will die. So there's a part of your subconscious mind, no matter how much you want to ignore criticism and the haters, there's a part of your subconscious mind that just won't let you do that. Because in the subconscious mind, fear always wins. And so we're going to hear that criticism as a way of being safe. So with all of that being the case, what are we supposed to do? Well, the reality is, is we can't simply listen to the haters and we can't simply ignore people providing criticism. So instead, what our goal is, like all things, is to find a proportionate, well-informed emotional response. Now, that's a fancy way of saying making sure that you're responding in a way that is good, useful, and healthy. Because the reality is, being afraid is something that keeps us safe. So I'm sitting here in my apartment in Brooklyn, New York, and it is good that I am afraid of tigers. But if I never left my apartment because a couple of miles from here in the Central Park Zoo, there was a tiger, that would be a disproportionate response. When I finished recording this video and I walked into my kitchen, and if I saw a little fuzzy thing rocking across the kitchen floor and I jumped on the table and screamed like a five-year-old, that would be a misinformed response. And so the goal that we want is we want to have a proportionate, well-informed response. And the reason why I say that is there are some of us, because of the things that we are saying and where we are in the world, it actually can be physically dangerous for us to state our truth. If you take any look at the news, there are multiple places in the world where people are speaking up for their truth and speaking up for their freedom, and there are dire consequences for that. But for most of us, fortunately, we are in a circumstance where if we're talking about the things that we love and we're talking about the things that we believe in, the worst thing that's going to happen to us is people writing nasty comments or ignoring us or not wanting to engage with us. 
So the goal is to put ourselves into a position where we have a proportionate, well-informed emotional response. Another way of saying that is we want to be in a situation where we listen to the thoughtful criticism, we make sure we are staying safe, and we're not letting anybody else take up space inside of our head. So the way that I like to respond to this and to transform the beliefs in my subconscious mind is through a little tool called tapping. If you're new to tapping right here, you'll see a little video that will give you an introduction what tapping is so you can navigate your way through it. But basically what we're doing with tapping is we're taking the proportion and emotional response and making sure that it's coming forward and showing up. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to do a little tapping on that exact thing. Now, if you've never tapped before and you don't know what tapping is, that's okay. You can just take a nice big deep breath and just listen to my words and use them as a guided meditation. Or what you can do is you can try and mirror along with me and tap along and see the change that happens. But when we tap for a fear like this, it looks like that. Tap on the tippy top of your head, take a nice big deep breath. And just move from point to point repeating after me. I recognize the fact if I am going to live an authentic life, if I'm going to do the things that I believe in, there are going to be people in the world who don't like that. Some people are going to be challenged by what I say. Some people think I'm going to be following the wrong path. Some people think it is unsafe for me to be doing what I'm doing. And some people just don't like different. And I also recognize the fact as a culture, we cannot agree on the fact that the world is round. And if we can't agree on the fact that the world is round, there is nothing I can say that everybody is going to agree with. There is nothing that I can do that everybody thinks is the right choice. But I also recognize the fact, the choices I make, the life I create is my life, is my choices. And I'm the one who has to live with them. And so I give myself permission to know it is okay for me to go against the grain. It is okay for me to believe what I believe. It is okay to live the life that I want to live. And there are people who aren't going to like it. And if they want to spend time and energy, Criticizing me, criticizing my beliefs, criticizing my choices. Well, that feels like a giant waste of time. That feels like a giant waste of energy. And if they want to waste their time thinking about what I'm doing, I don't think it's a really good choice, but it's their choice. And they get to choose what they are going to choose. I know that some people aren't going to like what I think, what I believe, and what I do. And that's okay. What's most important is that I am making choices that are authentic, that are genuine, and are right for me. 
Nice big deep breath. And once again, just tune in to taking one of those actions that you're scared of. See what it feels like now. Again, if that tapping thing seemed really, really wacky and weird, it is. And that's okay. If you want a little more information, again, if you click the little link right here, you'll be able to watch a short video where I explain tapping, how it works, the science behind it, and all of that. The important thing is to remember that as you are navigating the world, it's important that you're making good, thoughtful choices for yourself so you can navigate whatever is happening to create the life that makes the most sense for you. Because when you create the life that you want, when you live in an authentic way, that life ripples out to the people around you and it transforms all of our lives. And yes, that sounds super, super cheesy and it sounds a little Pollyanna-ish, but it's also something that I really believe. The more of us who are living authentically, the more of us who are speaking the truth that we feel in our heart, the better the world is going to be. It's not always easy and there is gonna be pushback, but the consequences of doing that is gonna make a real difference. Every single Monday, we love sharing little tap along videos just like this with you. If you have something that you're struggling with, if you have something that you're worried about, that you would like to create some transformation around, please drop me a note at support at tappingqa.com. I always love hearing from you and the things that you're struggling with. Many of the best videos that we create, many of the most useful tools we create come from questions from people just like you. Again, support at tappingqa.com. I get all of those emails. I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear how we can create some resources to support you as you try and live an authentic life, take action, and eliminate that self-sabotage. For Tapping Q&A, I'm Gene Montrestelli. I hope you have a great day, and I look forward to talking with you and tapping with you again real soon. Bye-bye.